Yeah, how about this for a project car? Oh, no, I don't think they're gonna get 40 grand for it. But we're at the Pier Sarah Museum in Buffalo, New York. So we're gonna go in there and take a look around. This thing's right hand drive. That's not legible, too bad. Air springs, pretty nice. Here's the beginning of Piercero. Refrigerators. Bird cages. I had to mute the sound out of a few of the clips on here because of background music that was playing in the museum. Hopefully people can pause and read this. Try not get the light reflecting in here is pretty hard. You get punched in back in, that's what you used. Wow. Fold it up to reveal a toilet. <laughs> but you can see it on this side. I'll come around there. Oh my lord. I don't know if I can get it from above the, I can't see what I'm videoing from above the cabinet, but that is really cool. So those are the striping brushes that the guys use to stripe the cars on. Oh, is that what they are? Yeah. So if you're into bicycles, this is a good place too. Pierce Aero Engineering and Experimental Staff, 1929. <laughs> Got a one cylinder in there. I have old outboard motors, and this is the little thing to float. This would come up as the float bowl fills, and you'd prime them by pushing that down. Looks like you got a throttle here. Or there, maybe, maybe this is, I suspect that's a throttle and that might be the choke.
1912 Pierce four cylinder motorcycle. Shaft drive. It's got pedals though. <laughs> And this must be the gas tank because that's probably the yeah, filling. Yeah. Well, you can see the top, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so can you see the car behind it to give it some perspective? That thing is pretty small. Oh, Willard Batteries advertising mm -hmm. clock. Yeah. That stuff is so cool. Champion spark plugs. These are the kind of gas pumps I remember as a kid. And I remember gas being about 22 or 24 cents a gallon when I was a kid. It's 38 cents there. I remember these outside of department stores and stuff. Just don't see this kind of stuff anymore. Oh, it's a dollar now. It used to be like a nickel or a dime. Oh, hood ornament. Pull down shades. Isn't this amazing? Look at the upholstery in yeah, there. This so, must be the latest. Kind yeah, of it's so gaudy. Really beautiful. Yeah, but it's talking about all these. Right. Yep. Yep. 1902 Buffalo Electric. You can see the motor. I think these are all Pontiac nice ones in this show. Very down to earth. Um, he, he literally he knows our executive director and we've known each other for like 40 years. So he's stopped by and he'll be telling him what So he'll come in, they'll go off the lunch, he comes in, sure enough, that's that town, turn it into a museum because he doesn't want to be bothered. He actually has a bigger staff than we do. And what he'll do is a couple times a year, He'll like put it up for auction as a charity kind of reward, and then the money goes to his favorite charities, and then he'll take a group of people through and take them out to lunch and you know drive around in a couple of his cars and sort of you know give them, give them the tour of the collection. But uh, he's a very nice guy. But he's been here. The Pickers have been here. Wayne Carini's been here. Nothing's ever done. You always find things to add or do or well, it's part of the hobby.
back before the era electric trunk releases there are vacuums so there's a little vacuum motor that pulled the latch in the trunk and a little vacuum pump under that you pull that little lever and it would pump a little vacuum to release the trunk 1933 Piercero I guess it's not going to show the interior, but what a cool car. Look at the rear of this. So there was, there was five of those cars made. Yep, that's car number one. And that's car one and three exist still. Three exist. And what was the top speed of that car? 115 miles per hour. At a price of $10,000. Yes, sir. Wow. It is the first Airstream car. What they meant to say was aerodynamic. Uh huh. So you see that panel between the front door and the front tire? Right. That's where the spare tire is. Okay. But it's inside so it doesn't create drag. No driver passenger mirrors to For no drag. drag. Yeah, and the door handles are even are, set in. Are, in, are in, indented in. It's the first car with the tire skirts on it. Just to make sure everyone knows how fast it can go on the back of the front seat, there's a second speedometer and clock. Oh, wow. If I couldn't can... get video of the inside of the car. The glass is reflecting yeah. on it. But simply put, um, she's very special. And if you look at it, you can see how many other car companies steal design I, features. Yeah, from it. totally. What a stunning car. Yeah, but when she was introduced, there was nothing like her on the road. Yeah, that's my favorite car you got here yeah. so far, hands down. Really beautiful. Yeah, she's an awesome car. Unfortunately, she's only with us till October. We've had her for a year and a half. Uh huh. But the owner's gonna, he's got his building almost ready for her. So she and the Duesenberg will leave us in October. Okay, and you said that's a V12 in that? Yes, sir, it is. A Pierce V12. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So that would top out at about 185 horsepower. Okay. Thank you for your time. This is a Frank Lloyd Wright gas station. It is so cool. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about this gas station? He'll really tell me? Yeah. Because he I don't know if I have that much time on the video. Well, the whole story that he gave us was this gas station was actually designed for Buffalo to be on Michigan Avenue, two streets up from where we are now. Oh, really? That they went to Taliesin and found these plans. And the only reason they built it inside is because currently this would not meet the current codes. But by building it inside, they could treat it as an exhibit. And didn't have to use the codes. And didn't okay. have to follow the codes. And because of the amount of copper, if it was built outside, so it would, who knows if the copper would still be there. It would be green, too. And it would be green. <laughs> Look at these gas pump nozzles. That is so neat. Yeah, these things were gas hungry, the guy, the curator here was telling me, so you'd need a gas station. I gotta walk around a little bit more here. This thing is really neat. <laughs> The downstairs is essentially the main room where you've got your phone booth, um, that kind of thing. You've got a little office off it to the right. Yeah. 
and there's your ice box in the desk for the boss to do the paperwork. And then over here, that opening you see there, next to the phone, that's into a little sleeping chamber. It's got a built-in bench with just a blanket on it. It's, the bench is made out of wood. It's not that comfortable. And this was going to be a 24-hour-a-day gas station. And that is a new concept in 27. Is this that gray? Because it yeah, it, this, it goes right down. There's the stairs. And all there is is a little walkway that comes at the angle out, goes back, and over to there. There's no staircase on this side. There's just the one on this. But there's also the in the back. Yes. But the one in the back is pretty much for the employees. Okay. Because they go in and the boss would give them their, their, their marching orders. And then they would go to this building here. The white eight-sided building is what they built instead of this. But this building behind it was already there. And that was where they worked on the cars. Oh. So think of this as a full-service gas station, the kind I remember as a kid, when they actually fixed cars at gas stations. Now they're all convenience stores around yeah, here. Right. Back when they did that. So the thing is, if you're coming in to gas up, you pull up by the bells, they come out, they clean your windows, they check the oil, they gas you up, they get your money, you're on your way. Right. If the car needs to be fixed, you pull it around the back, they pull it into the building. You can go up and hang out in the lounge and relax while they're fixing and your car. And that's the lounge up that's there. there yeah. So that's what the lounge is, yes. Up in here. And this has no gutters, so all the water would just... <laughs> what an amazing also, building. I gotta go upstairs and see if, see if I can get up there and get some video from upstairs. The ladies' room, the lounge area. Oh, look, it's even pink. The ladies' room. The stairs to the lower level, which they, he said was employees, basically. That's the gentleman's room door, and the gentleman's room is white. And the lounge again in there. Any permanent type antifreeze, $2.50 a gallon cash and carry. There we go. Copper roof. I kind of do an overview from here. That car is just, that's my favorite one so far here. This is a different room from where we were a minute ago. As people remember these, I remember them, the little Texaco in the town of Romeo where I grew up had one and you'd turn the crank to the amount of pressure you wanted and then it would ding when you reached that pressure. A lot of neat stuff here. And again, the filling station from a little further out. We'll give it some perspective. Of course, the window mechanism, the window regulator. This is a door off of this. Let's see where they show where they did shot at it to test it because that's what they used to do with the armored vehicles back in the day when they were done with them they would shoot them up blow them up that was the only way they could really test them now they like some of them the armored cars the presidents used are in museums but 
That's, they did test them by destroying them when they were done with them. It's a 1926 Elkar four cylinder speedster. What? Looks like a Cushman almost. That's a 1919 Piercero dual valve engine. That's one rugged looking radiator. I think that car is unrestored. It's a 1904 South Bend. It says powered with by a four cylinder Buffalo gasoline engine. Everybody knows what that is, I would assume. 1953 Cadillac. 1940 Lincoln. 1931 Piercero Model 43 Roadster. Really I like the color combination of this car. And of course we know 63 Chevy Impala SS. This has the 409 engine in it. <coughs> Excuse me. $3,928.02 and a 57 Thunderbird. And of course now the whole service station. So what that says is T-Y-D-O-L. So that's what it says right there. Oh boy, what happened to me? I lost my, my head. Hit the like button if you enjoyed my video. If you enjoy my channel, please subscribe and thank you for watching.